All right, guys, here we are. Um, see the Thursday or Friday, May 8th or May 9th, depending on which day you guys are choosing to do this. Um, we're, we're, at a, we're at a point where we're starting to get some more complicated, uh, not more complicated, but a greater variety of formulas to choose from. So on your paper, I gave you a little summary. Uh, the top half of your page is really a summary of formulas. And I want you to kind of go back and use this for your next you know, couple of homework assignments, studying for tests. This is sort of a quick little summary of, of, of six different angle relationships that relate to arcs. So the first one is the most obvious one. And so you could put here there's either five formulas or five theorems, or you could say there's six. I mean, technically the first one is just the concept of central angle. And of course, you guys all know how angle one and angle arc x are related to each other. That's the easy one. When this is at the center, when the vertex is at the center, they're just equal to each other. Done. Simple. The next one we already talked about, oh, of course, I think on your paper it says to describe what kind of segments are on there. That is created by two radii because they go to the center. The second situation was when we have these two segments on here, which of course you can look at and you can identify those. Write down what kind of segments they are. They're chords. And you know the relationship when a chord is over here. This is where I took the rubber band and I stretched the central angle from here over to here. You know, this might still be 90, but now this is now half of that angle. So it's half of whatever x is, and you can put x over 2 if you want. You can write it either way. So, you know, this is the case where the angle is half of the arc. This is where the angle and arc are equal. And then briefly the other day, at the end of the last section of notes, I wanted to make sure I previewed this last sort of theorem um, that you already know, is when you have a tangent and a chord, and there's that relationship. The relationship between angle 1 and angle x is exactly the same as this one. Basically, any time a vertex is on the edge of a circle, vertex on the edge of a circle of that angle, it's a one-half relationship, a simple, simple one-half relationship. So I think I called this the angle on a circle uh, on the notes the other day. You can call it the vertex on the circle. The book has a different name for it. I, I don't care which one of those names you use. Who cares about the name? It's the concept that the angle is half of the intercepted arc. And it's a relationship between a tangent and a chord. Simple. And it would work for both sides. So this angle over here would be half of that arc on the right. So again, we're coming up with theorems that relate arcs and angles. Arcs and angles, or angles and arcs. I don't care which order you put that in. Um, there's a total of six of them you can see on your paper. Four, five of them are theorems, or formulas, and one of them is just a basic concept of a central angle. Here's the new ones. And you've been working on some discoveries of these new ones. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I've sort of not drawn them up here yet. Take a minute and draw two chords. And as you're drawing them, think about where they intersect. Well, they intersect inside a circle. There's a specific relationship where they intersect inside a circle. You may already know it because you've done a discovery on this. There's a second situation where you have two secants. And we think about where do the two secants intersect. Well, secants, in this case, intersect outside the circle. And the third situation is when you have a tangent and a secant. And really, these two are actually the same theorem. So, we, you know, it might look like six different theorems or formulas. Really, any combination of secants and tangents, if they intersect outside the circle, is the same formula. So what we come up with here will be the same as what we come up with over here. So you may have already figured this out on your own, but I'll talk through it you know, in your ear here for a minute. Think about these vertical angles. Think about what you already know about vertical angles. Well, you already know that vertical angles are equal. So let's say these were both 100 degrees. You might assume that maybe these would be equal. But obviously that wouldn't look right, because x certainly looks like a much bigger arc than arc y. You know, some of you realize that if this was 100, these could be like, say, 120 and 80. And you might go, well, how does that work? 120 and 80, if you figure it out on your own, you realize the, this angle is exactly between these two arcs, numerically. So if this is 120 and this is 80, think about what number is exactly between 80 and 120. That would give you 100. And that, that is true for any vertical angles inside of a circle. Anytime two lines intersect inside a circle, the vertical angles are equal, are exactly between the two arcs. So if this was, say, 60 degrees, and this is 40 degrees, these would both be 50. Now, mathematically, how do you show that something's exactly between two things? Well, you take the average. So the measure of angle 1 would be equal to the average 
of these two chords, sorry, of these two arcs. So you'd add up x and y, and you'd divide by 2 in some way, shape, or form. So there's sort of the one that I'm, I think a lot of you probably could figure this out on your own if you had numbers that are close. They're not going to work out perfectly, but pretty close. And again, I don't care if you know the names, but the key word here is that this intersection is inside the circle. The key word here is the intersection is outside the circle. That's how you're going to pick these formulas when you're looking at problems. You know, whoa, what's the situation here? You're going to ask yourself, where is the vertex for the angle? Is it outside the circle? Or is the vertex inside the circle? Or is it on the edge of a circle? Or is it right at the center? Is it a fourth option on there? So some of you probably probably didn't figure this out too easily on your own. I think on, the, on your on your discovery, I had you do two tangents uh, to make it a little simpler so to look at. Basically, there's a relationship between these two arcs and this angle, and it's almost exactly the same as this one. If this was 100 and this was 60, this would be 20. Think about what you do with 100 and 60 to get 20. What can you do with 100 and 60 to get 20? 100 and 60, and how would I get 20? Or if this was 90 and this was 70, this would be 10. Maybe you come up with 90 minus 70 is 20, half of 20 is 10. Or 100 minus 60 is 40, half of 40 is 20. It's the exact same formula here, except with subtraction. And if you're asking me why that's true, well, it's true, the proof of this is pretty complicated. We're not going to do the proof of it right now. Um, so it'd be subtracting the two arcs and then divide by two, as opposed to adding the two arcs and taking half. So really, I want you to think of this as an average. Vertical arcs or vertical angles have an average relationship. And I put angle two on here because it would also be true for angle two. One and two are equal, which means they have to be equal to the average on here. Um, this one is the difference of these two arcs. And that, it's true for any combination of secants and tangents that intersect outside a circle. So I, I don't have a drawing with two tangents up here, but I easily could, um, like you had to do on one of your discoveries. So the same thing here. Now you're going to notice the formula here is going to look a little different from this one. Think about why this formula is going to look slightly different. It has to do with the order of subtraction. I'm going to switch the order around on this one to x minus y. It's the same formula. Think about why I'm subtracting x minus y. And hopefully you realize, well, this is a major arc, and I'm subtracting the minor arc from it. And that's the reason. It's a bigger arc minus a smaller arc. So when you're subtracting, if you ever get a negative here, it's probably because you're subtracting the smaller, uh, the bigger from the smaller instead. So I've got a quick little summary paragraph at the bottom of your page there. To select, to collect, to select the correct formula, what you're focusing on is where is the vertex. That's why I have the word vertex in here. Is the vertex inside the circle? Is it outside of the circle? So I didn't give you a lot of room to write on your paper, but it's either inside the circle, it's outside the circle, or it could be on the edge of the circle, right on the circle. In, out, or on is the three choices. And you know the, the edge of the circle is the easiest one because it's just half. Inside the circle is the average. If it's outside the circle, you've got to do this subtraction thing and divide by two. So I'm going to pause it here for a second, let you try these ex first example um, on your own. Try to find x, try to find y. And I'll be back in a minute.